Uh, hello. So uh, the actual talk is actually not application. So Simdi is no, it's my first Simdi <laughs> because I'm first in the line. Um, so it's just because I'm lazy in general. Um, so a short, you know, um, discussion of what I'm going to cover. I'm going to go quite quickly through the slides because it's supposed to be a relatively short uh, presentation. Um, but um, what I'm going to describe is what I was trying to solve uh, when I first got into uh, programming uh, using SIMD. A uh, few details about uh, some particular very simple algorithm. Um, I'm going to talk about SIMD just a little bit so I don't throw you in a few slides with uh, uh, code uh, without a basic introduction. Uh, I'm sure the following um, uh, talk is going to go uh, a lot deeper uh, into the, the subject. So um, then I'm going to show you, you know, um, um, a reference function, um, some implementations using um, uh, different um, uh, lens of SIMD, yes. Uh, so um, let's say uh, 4, 8, and 16. Um, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about what sort of uh, output you can see out of those um, uh, functions. I'm going to talk about why not the compiler is, can the compiler do this for us instead of us writing those kind of um, functions manually. Um, I'm just going to show some numbers. Um, they are taken from, you know, running an application on my laptop. So uh, you feel free to get the small program and run it on your own, you know. Um, there is a link for 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 the for where you can find it, um, and yeah, pretty much that's it. Um, and why you should probably not do it by hand and use uh, probably a library um, for writing those kind of applications. Um, when I was looking into programming with Cindy, you know, uh, I was trying to solve uh, pro. Uh, problems related to video analytics. Um, background subtraction is, is one of the building blocks for uh, more complex um, uh, analytics. And uh, basically it could help you to uh, find regions of interest in uh, video sequences. For example, if you want to uh, find quickly things that move, for example. Um, I, I was supposed to, describe, you know, uh, present a, a paper which I published some while ago, but due to the restrictions in time, I'm just going to present something a lot simpler. So instead of modeling background using with mixtures of Gaussians, I'm just saying, well, I'm, we are going to use just one distribution to model uh, uh, each pixel. Uh, so it's an embarrassingly parallel uh, workload. So each pixel is modeled independently by a, a distribution which is defined by two values, the mean and uh, variance. Um, the algorithm starts with the first frame setting the mean um, to the value of the pixel and the variance to some initial value, um, some magic value. Uh, so the, vol the following uh, frames, we simply uh, uh, decide if the pixel belongs to the foreground or background and then update the uh, small model. Um, we can go quickly over the equations. It's just the first one helps us to uh, decide if the uh, particular pixel is part of the foreground or background. Then the uh, rest of the equations would help us to update the, the, the model. Um, just, just to talk about how SIMD can, uh, can help with, with this, you know. So basically, uh, SIMD could help in two ways. One is basically to multiply uh, more than two numbers at a time, um, which could be uh, four by four, eight by eight, or 16 by 16, um, basically in, in, in the same, same time. Um, other, other things that can help you with is basically uh, uh, reducing or removing uh, branching altogether. Um, it's basically a mechanism of computing some masks and then you have uh, uh, 
the true value, the uh, false value, and apply the mask, and then you, you get your result. Uh, so you basically eliminate any jumps in 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 the output of of your algorithm. Um, it's supposed to perform faster this way. Um, well, I'm not going to describe those. So basically, um, those are the CIMD uh, registers. They could be from four to 16, depending on um, architecture and so on and so forth. So basic idea is you can load four, uh, eight, 16 floats at, at a time. Um, you can apply different operations on, on two registers uh, at the same time. Um, and uh, for example, you can broadcast some value along the all four, eight or 16 um, partitions in that uh, register. Um, in, in regards to how uh, we can remove uh, branching is as I, as I described. So you, you first build the mask by applying um, uh, the provided operation, then you use uh, basically the mask and um, the registers to uh, compute the result for uh, uh, up to four operations, eight or 16, depending on the length of uh, the registers. Um, you can find out in, in the, the following uh, presentation or uh, following the link, you know, um, what are those intrinsics uh, which could be used, you know, in order to code. We, we are going to see how, how we can use those things. Um, this is just a driver function, which basically will show selecting between the, the scalar version of the algorithm and the vectorized uh, versions of the algorithm. Um, so this is basically the reference implementation. As I, as I said, you know, first we decide if some pixel belongs to the background or the uh, foreground, and then uh, we update the um, we update the, the model. Um, and that's pretty much it. So you can do reliable enough, you know, uh, background modeling and uh, background and foreground uh, subtraction um, just based on this, you know, it, it will work pretty fine. The picture in, uh, at the beginning of the presentation was generated using this code. Uh, so uh, this is how I seen the uh, program may look like, you know, um, if you write it in in um, uh, in in C, you know, using uh, intrinsic. So those are going to compile to um, uh, the CPU instructions, um, and basically they can help you remove uh, doing the 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 two things I described at, at the beginning. You know, basically applying operations to more than one. Uh, value at a time, and in the same time removing uh, the branching um, out of out of your algorithm. Um, the same thing happens, you know. It looks very similar for uh, eight values, um, four, eight, and sixteen values. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. How how such an application or su such function could look like. Um, one thing to to bear in mind is um, in order to uh, use those uh, efficiently, the, the best way is to have uh, the memory organized as um, uh, structures of arrays instead of array of, of structures. So imagine the uh, two components of the Gaussians are not, you know, placed in like um, mean variance for the first pixel, mean variance for the second pixel, and so on and so forth. They are actually uh, read independently from, from, from an array. So in this way, it's going to be faster because you don't have to um, rearrange uh, those values in, 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 the, in the registers. Um, so this is how it translates. It translates quite, you know, um, directly into um, um, assembly code. Um, as you can see, there is no uh, jump instruction generated. Um, so it, it is supposed to be uh, much faster. So it's a very similar output for uh, eight. Um, 
sometimes could be, you know, slightly different um, uh, CPU instructions. And this is for the 16 ones. Um, now, uh, comes, it, it comes a question is, can the compiler write those functions for us? Do we really have to have the scalar version and then have the uh, optimized one using uh, uh, those low level constructs? Um, the answer is you may still need to do that at the moment. So for example, this is uh, an output from um, GCC 12.2. Um, as you can see, um, it tries its best to, um, to remove branching, but uh, it doesn't translate the minimum and the maximum um, to the directly to instructions. It actually creates uh, those jumps. Um, but if you're lucky enough and uh, you, 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 you pay for, um, for, for a premium compiler, you, you, may, you may get that for free if the algorithm is simple enough. Uh, so this is the newest Intel compiler, um, which is capable to translate everything and remove all the branching from, from the code. Um, so the next step could be to, um, for example, if this code is called in a loop, unroll the loop, and use instead of the scalar version of the SIMD operations, uh, the vector one um, on, on different lengths for uh, 816. Um, so the answer is probably in the future, uh, most of the compilers would do this for, for us if the algorithm is simple enough. Uh, let's put it this way. Um, few few numbers again you know uh, take them with a pinch of salt um, it's so as you can see from Scala to simd4 it's quite a huge jump but it's not only the effect of using simd is probably also for the um, for the optimizations that the compiler could do um, then from four to to eight is an expected sort of doubling um, or reducing to half the, 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 the speed of the execution per frame. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't measure for the 16 one because I don't have a, at home uh, a machine that supports that uh, instruction set. Yeah, so just to leave you with some idea is why you should actually use a library uh, is there are multiple instruction sets. Um, some available to only to the very new uh, architectures, um, making sense of what intrinsics are available and uh, all that could be actually uh, daunting. It's, it's quite a diff difficult task. Um, so I would say this is the main reason uh, go for, for a library um, instead of uh, writing those kind of functions by, by, by hand. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you didn't expect to learn uh, programming uh, with CMD in, uh, in uh, such short time. Uh, I'm sure the following uh, presentation is going to uh, present, you know, uh, this in like more detail than, than this. This, is, was, this was just supposed to show you uh, a simple application of, of, uh, of such things. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it.